Hi, I'm Holly Pike. If you'd like a trial of the Generations software that I use for digitizing, please visit TryGenerations.com. This video is a recording of a live video I did for my previous students. You may hear references to You Can Digitize or YCD. That's my old website that is now closed. My new website is digitizingschool.com. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Good evening, everyone. This is Holly Pike from artisticthreadworks.com and youcandigitize.com with Generations. Welcome to our Monday evening webinar. It was a beautiful day here today in Florida, and I hope you had great weather too. I'm going to go ahead and get started with the lesson right away. We took questions before the webinar started, and if you'd like to ask a question before a webinar, please attend live, and you'll be able to do that. So let's insert artwork. I'm going to select this, say OK. Images template, so the same thing we do every week, and say OK. This is going to be a very large piece of artwork. So this is uh, 12, 13, 40, almost 15 inches. That's way, 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 way too big. So let's make it smaller. I'm going to make it about 110, just so it's a little bigger on my screen. Hit my tab key. This number changes, and that's perfect. Click OK. And here's our little design. Well, you might be saying, huh, those details are just a little bit light, Holly. I can't really see them. Well, that's OK, because I'm going to hold my Shift key down. Once my artwork is selected with these eight little boxes, I'm going to hold my Shift key down and repeatedly press the plus key on my keyboard until it darkens up and I can see everything I need to see. Any questions? Um, no questions? Okay. Very good, very good. Okay, let's take a look at this now. Let's talk through it the way we would normally talk through a design so that we know what we're going to do. Now, when the artwork was light, we did not see this highlight. So that's one reason for always just giving an attempt at darkening that artwork so that we can see, are there any details that we're missing that we think might be important that we'd like to kind of catch? Okay, so what, what will we do first? It's kind of a toss-up. We can do the sun or we can do the ball, but it has to be one or the other to be first. I'm going to do the sun first, so this is going to be one. And then we're going to do the ball. It's going to be two. And then we'll deal with the dolphin. Okay? So, let's go ahead and get started. A couple ways we can do the sun. I'm going to start with a gradient fill so that you can kind of see how a gradient fill would be used in a real life situation. I always get questions on how would I use gradient fill and why would I use gradient fill. I'm going to come up to 400 because we always work at the same magnification so that our eye gets used to seeing our overlaps and things that we're doing, less stitch outs that way, less tessos that way. Let's go grab a yellow, and I'll grab this one here. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to pick up my freehand area tool. I'm going to start right there with just a little bit of overlap under the dolphin. We don't want there to be any gaposis gap happening there between the sun and the dolphin. Okay, move it here, come across, double click or hit enter. Okay. I'll go back out so we can see it. And now let's go ahead and put a gradient fill in here. I'm going to right click, go up to accessories, and create gradient shading. A new box for some of you We've got yellow up here, which is layer A. Let's go right here and choose a second color, like maybe orange, and click OK. 
What's going to happen here is this is going to be blended together, these two colors. You can see that yellow is darker here, lighter here. Orange is darker here and lighter here. Your settings are down here. So I can left click and drag. And you can see the changes up in that box. As I drag it over here, it gets much more orange. As I drag it back here, more yellow. Or I can do this and see how much more open the density becomes. This is density here. This is the density. Okay, same thing here. We can drag it. And you can actually see the changes. When you get a setting that you like, then you can just, oops, didn't want that. When you get a setting that you like and you're happy, I'm going to disable the underlay. The reason I'm going to disable the underlay is because we now have two layers of stitching. With two layers of stitching, we don't need underlay. Plus, if we put the underlay in, it's going to go in the opposite direction of our gradient, and you're going to see it, and it's going to just look really bad. So for an example, I'm going to leave it there so that you can see what it looks like. I'll click OK. But nothing changes until I hit Generate. When I hit generate, you can see now how the gradient of the sun works. You can kind of see a little bit. I can kind of see the underlay underneath there. So what I want to do is I'm going to go back. And then I'm just going to do the gradient fill again. Choose orange. I'm going to disable my underlay. I'm going to leave everything else the same. We can change the stitch angle here. Notice how my cursor changes when I get over that. I can just drag this guy around to whatever stitch angle I want. You can change your stitch type from complex to satin to radial to arc. Let's go ahead and do arc. You saw what the, the complex looked like. Let's do arc and see if we can get more of a curve going. Say OK and generate our stitches. Well, look at that. It completely changes how this looks. This little dot here, if we drag it up here, watch what happens. It changes where the arc arcs around. If we go out and take a look, that's, that's pretty cool. Any questions on the gradient fill and what I just showed? Yeah, you almost don't need the highlight. I'm not sure I would put the highlight in. I'm going to do it a little differently and put the highlight in. But for this one, I might not put it in. Probably don't need it, but let's just take a look and see how we could put the highlight in. I'm going to take my circle tool, left click, hold, and drag to put the highlight in. Turn my 3D view on. I'm going to apply an arc because I want them to be the same so that they blend, but you see the, so that you see the angle. Now I'm going to lighten the density. Well, let's try 0 0.8. Let's remove our underlay. Give it a little less density, so we're going to raise that number up a bit. Okay. I'll just turn it a little bit. And there's our highlight. We might even give it just a little less because the idea is for it to be there, but for you not to say, oh, hey, look, they've got a highlight in the middle of that sun. It's supposed to just be there, and you're supposed to say, wow, that's cool. That's cool. I might go and use something a little less obvious, like that. Questions? What about if you want only one color arc? Um, then just make the one 
uh, make the sun the way I made it and change it to an arc. So let's just, just do it again. Good question. Okay. Oops. Don't forget to drop the tool. Okay, if you wanted just one color arc, just take your fill, change it to whatever you want. Let's copy our highlight. And just move it so that it looks right. One color arc. You can change the density settings if you like. Would I smooth the edges on the sun? Mm, I don't know. You could, I suppose. It wouldn't hurt anything. So let's go ahead and entertain that thought. I'm going to select them and use smooth edges. Gives a little more smooth look to things. But remember, you don't have an outline around it, so I'm not sure I would smooth edge it. You could put an outline around it to cover that. I would simply select the top one, view outline icon, right click, area from border from area edges, triple run, and OK. But you don't want this outline underneath the dolphin. So at this point, I would right click. Divide with a line, hit enter and escape, generate. Now see these two pieces here? I can take this and get rid of it and still have my outline so it looks more finished. If you like a more finished look. What does it look like with the yellow stitched after the orange? Well, let's find out. Oh, it changed it. That's weird. There you go. It looks like the yellow is stitched after the orange. I like it better the other way. I like it better with the orange on top. You could use red or, you know, something else too, you know. You can actually pretty much do whatever you'd like. Yes, you can swap the colors by dragging it to the top. Absolutely. What if you make density even less? Because that is a pretty heavy density. Let's uh, make it half as, half as much. Okay. It's a little, just a little lighter. And when you go out, it just, it changes that arc dramatically and if you pull the arc up like that it changes how it responds as well so it depends on how close you have it and where you have it for the arc and you could play with that literally all day i hope you don't but you could play with it literally all day highlight does kind of look like a planet okay so that's that's what i would do with with the sun i play with the colors and get the colors exactly the way i like them but that's that's how I would approach it. Okay, no more questions on that. Let's do the ball next. The ball uses probably my most absolute favorite tool in the software, and uh, that is divide with a curve. We can do this ball a couple ways. I can take my circle tool and I can draw a circle, and that would be fine. We would just have to create a void underneath the nose of the dolphin. That would be fine. The other way would be to take our free hand area tool and go around it, going around the nose, just like I did the sun. So let me show you that. If 
freehand area tool. Remember to overlap so that you're not going to have gaposis. Double click. And there you have it. Either way is fine. Just remember to create the void underneath here if you use the circle tool. Okay. All right. So now we have our ball. Let's go back up to 400 because I just so like this tool. Actually, I'm going to do 200 just so that you all can see the ball. Okay. I'm going to right click on the object I want to divide. Go to view outline icon. Right click. Choose divide with a curve. Now here's the secret. Hit the F4 key on the keyboard. Okay. I'm going to start outside the area with a left click and then with right clicks I'm going to come back outside the area and back inside the area. I'm dividing this. Okay. Enter. You can see that the lines are there. Hit escape and generate. And look at that. We got all those pieces. Is that the coolest thing or what? Now we can select them using our control key. And if, if you're here as a new person and maybe you just got a trial version, because I know we have a whole bunch of trials out there, um, this, this feature should just have you like, Jumping, jumping up and down and going, oh my gosh, I finally found the software that I can use. Because this, is, this feature alone is why I bought Generations. And there we have our little beach ball. But we have things in weird stitching order. So what I would normally do is I would take the greens, because it's the outside most color. I'd select them all using my control key. And just... Drag them, up there, Drag them up there, and then take a look and see if I like it. Left click on this one, left click again, and drag it up there. Is that, that looks okay to me. Now let's check our stitch angle because all of these stitch angles are gonna be the same, and that's a problem, right? Those of you that have been with me a while, you know that's a problem because um, you're gonna get some, some weird things happening. So let's, let's deal with our stitch angles. I'm going to change them to have less push and pull issues. Sometimes you have to play with this to get the exact look that you like. Questions about divide with the curve. There's a loud echo again. I had to switch internet. It's gone. Oh, okay. Larry had to switch internet. Sorry. Okay. It's better now, right? Okay, good. Okay, Larry had to switch the internet for better. Any questions about divide with a curve and getting that ball done quick and easy? Now, all other software, this is what you would have to do. Y'all know this. For those the new people, You'd have to do this. Then you would have to make sure that you had the exact right overlap here so that you don't get gaposis and push and pull doesn't make you pull your hair out. Well, you know what? We don't have to do that because the software is smart. They've designed it so that all you have to do is divide with a curve or divide with a line, and this will stitch perfectly 100% of the time, provided you hoop correctly and you don't monkey around with these pieces now. Which means you don't go, oh, okay, that stitch doesn't look quite right. I'm gonna go in there and play with that. You can change stitch angles, that's not a problem, but don't go in and, and play with individual stitches and don't uh, move them around because you don't like how they're positioned. Okay? Questions?
How about the outside green on top using an arc? Sure. We'll do it on the top and on the bottom. You have to find your dot. It's usually in the center of your screen. Okay, that's not right. So you need to play with this. It's not something that's going to be a, a slam dunk thing. You have to play with it to get the right look and feel. These two pieces. Oops. You have a little problem with these two pieces separate, but you know you can do it if you tinker with it long enough. You can make it make it happen. And the arc is one of those things that you really do have to kind of you know explore with it and experiment with it. Okay, you could you could play all day with that. Could I go over how I decide which stitch directions? It's really quite technical. <laughs> I look at this. I look at this one. I'm going to go back on on this to get back to the here. I'll do it the easy way. Okay, it's really quite a technical process. I look at this one and I say, oh, okay, my stitch angle is going this way. So what I do is on my screen, I put my finger, this is how I learned to do it. I put my finger where in the direction that my stitch angle goes, and then I click on the next one and I say, oh, where does that one go? Is it the same or is it different than the one that is touching it? So is this stitch angle the same or different than this one? It's different. We're good to go. Then I click on this one. Is this one the same or different than this one? It's different. Is this one the same or different than this one? And the same with this. You want them to be a little bit different. Um, remember that stitch angles can go all 360 degrees. But you want to be careful of 90 and 0. Because this is flat across, and it's a multiple of 45. It's a direct multiple of 45. 45 is the bias of fabric. And it's, this is a multiple of 45, so you want to be careful not to be exactly on 90 because you will get more push and pull. And you'll think, oh, my design is bad. Oh, my design is bad. No, your stitch angle is bad. Okay? And this zero, of course, is, is a multiple because from zero you get 45 and then 90. So you want to stay away from exactly on zero and exactly on 90. Or, as I remember it because my math skills are just so poor, straight up and down or straight across. What about 45? And 45 is not a good one either because it is half of 90. 45 is the number you kind of want to stay away from and multiples of it. So you might make it 93 or you might make it 49. Don't go directly on that. If you're off just a little bit, it'll be enough to, to help alleviate that, that issue. That's how I go about deciding stitch angles. Some of it also is based on what looks good. If I took this guy and went about there, if it was different, it's, it's the same, but if it was different than this one, but I didn't like the look, I'd keep going until I found something where I liked the look. Make sense? Someone else might have a more technical way of deciding what stitch angle goes where, but trust me, it works the way I'm telling you to do it. 
I like to keep things simple. I like to keep them so that um, if it works for me 30,000 times, it's going to work for you a couple hundred times while you get started and, and until you get the trust factor up. Your ins and outs, can you have in on one side and then out on the other side of a ball? Or can you have them both on the same side? Does it make a difference? It really doesn't make a difference um, as far as I'm concerned. What really matters to me is where I'm going next. If I'm going in here and out here, I better be going here next, and I'm not. See? So I want them to make sense stitching-wise. Okay, this doesn't make sense. So I'm going to stitch this one first, then this one next. Look at my problem. I've got my in here, my out here. What's going to happen? It's going to cut and jump over to here. We can fix that by doing that. Now, we're going to fix this one by dragging that in right there. The next one to stitch, we're almost going to have to jump. You might travel there. But I would be nervous that someone would use black where the green is and white where the red is, and then they're going to have this black line running right through the, the white. So I'm a belt and suspenders kind of gal. I'd rather let them cut a jump stitch and have it right than have them call me and say, your travel stitch is blah, 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 blah. So that's my opinion. You, you guys can really do what you like. Okay, so that's the beach ball. Okay. How many degrees different do they need to be? <laughs> um, different. I, one or two probably isn't enough. You know, uh, if you're a math person, I would say five degrees. I do it until they look right and until they stitch right. What didn't you know, Rachel? Okay, let's go ahead and do the dolphin. We're good on time. Okay. Okay, we have three things going with the dolphin, at least. We have this fin, if that's what that's called, to deal with because it's different than one whole piece. We have highlights. And we have shading. Highlights and shading are two different things. Highlights are caused by light hitting the object from a specific angle. Shading is caused by other things hiding the light from an area. Two different things. One is light, one is dark. Let's put the dolphin in and then we'll deal with all the rest of it, okay? This looks like a good color for a dolphin. I'm going to do this the simple way, simplest way possible. Turn off my 3D and pick up my line tool or my area tool. I'm going to keep it simple. You know what they say. Okay, I'm going to go just go straight through this little fin because I'm going to show you how to kind of fix it and make it look right. Nothing hard here, right? This is what we do every single week. We just make shapes. Doesn't get hard until you stitch it. <laughs> okay. Right clicks on the curves. Right here on the sharp point, you're gonna put a left click. See that overlap that we built? Perfect, absolutely perfect. Double click when you're done. Maybe, okay. All right, there's our dolphin shape. He looks pretty good, pretty good. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you how to put the shading in first because the shading looks kind of like it goes underneath the fin and I wanna tuck it underneath the fin so it looks like it's truly underneath this fin. And then we're gonna put the shading in here. A Couple ways you can do shading, it depends on what you like and what you prefer and what pleases your eye. Remember, you digitize for yourself first, for others second. 
It's an artistic thing. If you're not happy, no one else will be happy. Let's pick a color that's just a little bit darker. You can do shading by using your area tool, creating an area on top. Okay. And lightening the density or raising the number on the density. You will want, if that happens to you, hit the A key. You will want to remove your underlay because you don't need it. You have a layer underneath it of stitching. Okay. Make sure when you lighten density, you see this line running here that looks kind of weird? That's caused by your ins and outs being in the wrong place. So you want to make sure that your ins and outs are opposite each other. Let's see if that gets rid of it. Okay, very good. Very good. See how lightening up the density adds a little bit of dimension. Let's change that density a little bit more. That's pretty good. So that's one way to make shading. Let me put the other piece of shading in another way. There's actually multiple ways you, you can do shading. I'm going to use the satin tool. Remember that's our back and forth one. Put two left clicks close together, and then with your right clicks, make the shape. When you get here, two left clicks. That's what it looks like. But notice with satin, satin rises up above. It's meant to give height and texture. So we want to really, really, really lighten the density up on this. So hit your space bar, remove your underlay. And then let's change the density setting. And I'm guessing. Now remember, I've done tons and tons and tons of designs. So I kind of know what's going to happen when I hit these numbers. You won't know. So it's going to be trial and error. You do not have to use the numbers I am using. In fact, I would prefer that you don't. Because you're not really learning. Then you're just kind of playing, I could do what Holly does, and that's not a good thing. Okay? So that's another way to do shading. It has a different look, a different feel. It's all very measured and it's all very prepared, okay? Very neat and tidy. I'm going to put this fin in and I'm going to show you another way to do shading, but I'm going to use it for highlighting. So let's put the fin in. I'm going to use my air freehand area tool. Wrong color. If you do that and you get the wrong color, select it and then go right over here and right click on the correct color chip. The reason I did this fin separately is because it's on top of the fish. Okay, it's on top of the dolphin. And if I did it all as one piece like this, it would look odd. It wouldn't look like it made sense. So you kind of have to think about what's real and what isn't. Let's create a void underneath here so we don't forget. The reason I'm creating a void is I now have two layers of stitches, this layer and this layer, that's going to be too thick. We don't want breastplate armor. We want really nice pliable embroidery. View outline icon, right click for the magic, create a void using an existing area. Your cursor changes to the magic hand. Now just hover and you get the red outline left click and it's gone and it's perfect and it will stitch 100% of the time correctly provided you hoop correctly and you don't play with it. Meaning you don't move this, you don't edit it, you don't tinker around with it. You know who I'm talking to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right, let's turn off the 3D view. Now let's go down here. I'm going to use my preferred method of putting shading in. Hang on one second. My preferred manner of putting shading in is with line tool. You can do it two ways. Let's take a light blue. If I take the line, the regular line tool that we all know and love for red work, you can start here and just with 
left clicks. You can put the shading in or highlighting in this case. And with this, you can actually follow the stitch direction, which means it's going to blend rather than stand out. When you shade, if you use stitch direction opposite what you're shading, it's going to sit on top of it and it's going to stand, really stand out. So if you want shading or highlighting to really, really stand out, put it opposite stitch direction. Okay, let me give you a visual. This is what you're, you're going to shade. You want it to really stick out. You want it to just like be screaming out. You're going to go this way. If you want it to blend in, which I would hope most of the time you would like to blend things, you're going to go in the same stitch direction or close to the same stitch direction. Because what's going to happen then is this shading or highlighting thread is going to blend in the same direction with the other stitches and it's going to be very subtle, very classy looking and you'll look like when someone sees that they're going to say, wow, that's really awesome. They'll think this is good too, but they won't think it's awesome. Okay, so pay attention to your, your shading and how you apply it. Okay, so let's take a look at what I've got here. I can change the direction or anything that I want to change here with the shading and highlighting, but I have total and complete control using the line tool. And if you guys know anything about me, I'm a little bit of a control freak. I'm looking at my family here telling them, hey, um, I like to know what's going to happen. I don't like unpredictability. So I really like using the line tool for my highlighting and my shading. But we have another tool that I like even more since I use a tablet and a pen, and that's the continuous line tool. The continuous line tool is this one here. You may not have used it. If you have a mouse, you're not gonna like this tool. If you use it with a mouse, it's gonna be messy and it's gonna be ugly, but if you use it with a pen and tablet, you're gonna love it, and you're gonna say, oh my gosh, just give me stuff I can do with the continuous line tool because it's so much fun. Continuous line tool is just like writing with a pen. You put your pen down and move it, Until you lift your pen, it's just going to keep making lines. When you lift, it makes line. It makes whatever you scribbled. Now, if I could hear you guys, you're going to be going, oh, man, that is so cool. Yeah, that is so cool. But let's use it for highlighting. I'm going to start right here. I can be a little bit artistic with this because highlighting and shading, you don't get a block of color. You get, you know, kind of the essence of, 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 a, of shading. It's not always even and perfect. In fact, it rarely is. Okay, four ways to do highlighting and shading. This is my preferred way. You almost have to over exaggerate the area because it tends to compress, squeeze down a little bit. But all of them are acceptable and I use them all interchangeably. But my favorite one is the, uh, the continuous line tool. Okay, I covered the stitch direction thing. Um, when you use the line tool, is straight up and down better or smooth curve look? Depends on what you're shading or highlighting. If I'm highlighting um, something curved, I'm going to go curved. If I'm highlighting something straight, I might go straight. I might do a combination. It's all about how it looks. Do it. If it looks good, great. If it doesn't, delete it and try again. It's all about how it looks. <laughs> Patty, I trust this comment is about my control issue. This is it an issue? <laughs> is it an issue versus? And with the continuous line tool, it looks easier to create custom arc when shading. Custom arc. Yes, I think it is. I think it is because if, 
If I was going to shade something round, I would first, of course, bring it up to here, and I would take my continuous line tool and put it in exactly the way I want it. Go as slow as I need to go. You can do this with the line tool. Just keep your uh, right click down until you get to the end. Then you're going to come back with curves. Left click here, curves here, left click there. You can do it. It just takes a little longer. and It's not quite as much fun. But it, it will work. You can certainly do it. My uh, computer doesn't want to let go of my right clicks here. Okay, so that's highlighting and shading. And um, kind of brings this little guy to life a little bit. But let's, let's do this now. When we look at the artwork, the artwork has these cool detail lines happening. And like this and that's kind of what makes this piece of artwork so let's take a look at how we can do that how can we do that to get all the features and the characteristics in this little guy well it's actually really simple to do I'm going to select my uh, my object or the, the dolphin the outline icon right click create area from outside edges I'm going to use a triple run because that's what kind of outline I like and I'm going to say okay now I'm going to look at this really hard. I'm going to study this and I'm going to say, is this gray area that I see, which is the outline, going to be anywhere that I don't want it to be? I'm hoping that you all are pointing at the screen and going right there, right there over the fin. That's exactly right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to right click on the gray, choose divide with a line, and we're going to click, click. Click, click, hit enter, generate. Now look at this. See that right there? That's the piece we divided. Say goodbye. Okay, so now we've got an outline around most of the dolphin. Let's make it darker, like maybe that. Let's look at the artwork again, okay. Let's outline this one. Same steps we did before. Triple run. Okay. Now, based on the artwork, we know that there is no outline here. Okay. So we're going to right click, divide with a line right there and right about there. Enter, escape, generate. I'm going to get rid of that one that crosses here. And I'm going to change the color. So I'm going to select it and right click on the color that I want it to be over there. Okay, now we've got all that stuff. Let's make it bigger and see what else we have to put in. Now we're going to do red work. We're essentially going to do red work now, okay? I'm going to put these lines in. See why I have you learn the, the line tool first when I teach? It's all about building on a, a previous skill. Remember the Karate Kid? Those of you that have taken one-on-one -on -one lessons with me. Oh, wait, that line doesn't go there. Um, you know that the story about the Karate Kid is, you know, Mr. Miyagi teaches him all kinds of things that he thinks he doesn't need to learn. He thinks he's being taken advantage of until he gets him in the back and he says, okay, Daniel, show me paint the, you know, paint the fence. And he does it, and Daniel's like, holy moly, I know karate, that's so cool. This is the same thing, guys. Same thing. I'm teaching you one skill at a time, like in the challenge, you're learning one skill at a time, and I'm requiring that you only use that one skill or those two skills. We're building on one, building to the next, building to the next. By the time you get done with this 12-month challenge, every one of you that do it will be ready to be in my apprentice class. I promise you. Okay, let's take these lines now that we made, all these white lines. I'm selecting them, holding my control key, and the two blue lines. We're going to merge. Watch the magic. OK, 
Okay, let's change our in and out a little bit when that happens. Now we've got all those detail lines in there. They're merged together and it looks good. And I'm happy with it. Okay, let's put the eye in. Oh, we forgot some highlighting here. Let's put the highlighting in. You can always go back and change that. And for this highlighting, I'm going to attempt to kind of curve it a little bit so that it's not a flat area across his head, but it's just kind of curved out. I might take a little more time with it if I was doing it um, for, for real. Sometimes if you take and put your highlighting in, you can kind of move it up a little bit. Let's move this up. Okay. I'm going to put this in. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to use my satin tool for this because I know it's going to make a, a pretty, a pretty dot. Let's change our density to about hmm, 0.8. Remove your underlay. Always remove your underlay when you have more than one layer because you don't need more than that. Okay, that'll work. Let's put his eye in. Using my area, my circle tool, we all know that we left click and drag to get a circle. Okay, we all know that. What we're going to do is, let me pick my black so you can actually see what I'm doing, or a dark color anyway. Okay, I'm going to get my circle tool. I'm going to hold my control key down. When I hold my control key down and I left click and drag, I now get an oval. Instead of having to digitize that oval and get it perfect, hold your control key down and left click and drag to make your eye. So let's go ahead and do that right here. Now for the highlight in his eye, we kind of need that for this guy because he sort of looks dead without it. You don't want to have a dead dolphin. That would be unacceptable. I'm going to move my in. Okay. What I'm going to do for this is I'm going to use my um, insert stitches. And I'm going to make it really big so you guys can see what I'm doing. I always get questions about this. I'm going to go put a couple stitches in just a little shape. And then I'm just going to go just make a little spot there and enter. And change it to white. And there's our dolphin with the highlight in his eye. Let's change the stitch angle here though because this looks kind of bizarre. I'm not sure if it'll stitch that way or not. So let's adjust our stitch angle just a little bit until you're happy with the result. And there's our little dolphin guy. You could play with this forever, literally. There's our dolphin, pretty much ready to go and ready to stitch, except for color sorting and stitching order. I'm sure there's a ton of questions now. Do I leave the shadings triple run or change it to single? I would generally change it to single run, but remember my software is set to uh, triple run for my default because I do a lot of red work. So I would change these two to a run. They're going to blend better. They'll be lighter. They won't be as chunky. Yeah, the sides of the sun look nice now. <laughs> Hi, bro. Um, the first shading method was a complex fill changed uh, to a light density with no underlay. Not as much flexibility with that, um, but it works. You know, you, it, it works. 
and it depends on what you're doing as to you know how well it works. You can see how okay. Oh, feel better. Feel better. That's that's awful. Cold is awful. Okay. Oh, you can take it. Yes, Steph. Um, I learned the uh, Steph says, Oh, you can take out the line you don't want before you generate. Yes. And I find that the divide with a line tool and divide with a curve tool behave much more nicely when you do it before you generate. And you can kind of look at it and study it and say, Okay, I don't want that line there. You can turn the artwork back on and do whatever. You know, you need to do to get a good look at it. You could probably hit F4, I'm thinking, um, to see the artwork through. But the, the, the tool behaves much nicer that way. How did the merge decide what color to make the entire outline? Um, it was based on which color I chose first. Okay. So choose the color that you want the entire merged piece to be in the design, so like I chose blue and then chose the rest of the stuff. Um, and then it will merge it correctly. If it doesn't, just change the color. You know, don't get hang up with the little stuff. Um, satin might look good there because there's a curve. It might, it might. I would probably try several different things of doing shading and highlighting till I got the exact look I was looking for. There is no one way. What is the difference between that control circle and the ellipse? I don't know. I don't use the ellipse. Um, oh, that's a circle tool. I don't even know where it is. Okay, the ellipse. Okay, the ellipse works differently. See how, how this is working? When you get the ellipse and then you click, it makes a circle. This, I don't know. I guess this is a true ellipse, they call it. This is not. I don't use it because I have a circle tool. <laughs> I don't need two tools. I just don't need two tools to do things. I wonder if I hold the control key. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. You can start from the center. Okay, I see the difference. I got the joke. With the ellipse, I could start here and go out like that. With the circle tool, you kind of have to start on the end and draw diagonally and kind of guess how big your circle is going to be. If you get my gif, my drift there. So with the true ellipse, you can start in the circle in the center and get a little more accurate maybe about how you want your circle to be. How about putting an arc on the stitches for his left fin to get more of a 3D look? Okay. Okay, not sure I like it, but it looks okay. Could I please repeat how I put the white in the eye? Yes, I'm gonna use black. So I could show you. I like the insert stitches because it only inserts one stitch for every time I touch the screen. Okay. So I would just put a little one, two, three, and then I start crossing over. I want it to lock in like that. That way you only have nine stitches as opposed to Using the line tool, I know it's triple stitch, so let's change it. I have 18 stitches in this, nine stitches in this. So this will potentially make a knot on the back or a sharp, hard, pointy thing that if somebody stitched this on a kid's shirt, that sharp, hard, pointy knot thing, it's going to be cutting into that kid and they're not going to be happy. So that's how I do the highlights and eyes. Okay, good questions tonight, guys. I 
Yeah, he's a keeper, Ro. He's definitely a keeper. At least I told him for the first 50, and then we renew after that. Would you define the colors in the ball by outlining the sections? I would not. Um, I would not. I don't like outlines as a general rule. I'll use them when they're necessary, like here, because I want to get all this detail-y stuff in. But something like this, I think it just makes it look more kiddish and not really realistic. You wouldn't have outlines on this if it was a beach ball. So I wouldn't put them in. You can, but I, I wouldn't personally. Could you leave the sun off without compromising the artwork? I could, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you probably could. You probably could. In fact, I might offer it in a set both ways, with the sun and without the sun. We call that a derivative. You have to lock them, Jill. You have to, she said when she sews out something with insert stitches, they come out. You have to lock them. When I went like this, really tiny, I'm locking them. Kind of doing just a one, two, three, four like that. Then put the rest of your stuff in. When you get here, put a couple of stitches in. A couple little, just little tiny stitches close together. And that's going to lock them. It's like, um, it's what your software does for you automatically. You just lock those stitches in so that they don't just pull out. Okay. I do remove the artwork. Um, I like to remove it before I do the grouping because that way I don't have the problem of possibly grouping it. So I'll just click on my hide or view image and I'll just click down on the corner and click delete. Now if that doesn't work, sometimes your, your design can be so close to the edge of that that it'll delete the whole design. If it does, hit undo. Don't panic, just hit undo. I'll sometimes select all of my frames and click on this little eyeball. And what that does is, when you turn off your 3D view, it makes the software think it's not there. So you can click right in the middle of this piece of artwork and delete it. I don't know what that is. It's kind of scary. I think I'll delete it. Just remember to go back and select everything with your shift, holding your shift key, turn everything back on, generate, turn on your 3D view and everything will be there. That's the easiest way. The other way you can do is when you start, you can come down here and lock image. If you lock the image, let me bring the image back. If you lock the image, then it's locked. It's not going anywhere, and you should be able to group without interfering with the image itself. Should be able to. Oh, I have something turned off still. Uh, look, I backed up. Okay. As I promptly tell you, don't forget to. You should be able to group everything. You can move this out of the way and now unlock your image and delete it. There's three ways to delete your artwork. Okay, we finished this design. Do you want this design so you can stitch it and see how all these different shading techniques uh, stitch out? I know the answer to this one. Okay, let me save it. File, save as. I'm going to find my file. OK, 
Okay. Tonight, our artwork is generously allowed by designstitch.com. Good folks. Mickey is a good guy. Go check out his artwork. He has artwork anywhere from $10 a set to custom exclusive stuff. It's nice artwork, good artwork, and he's a really fair guy to deal with. So um, go check him out. That's that. I saved it. I will put the artwork up for you, for you to practice with, along with the webinar, the, the video, as soon as we get it processed. And um, I'm going to, I'm going to close the recording, but I'm still going to be here for questions for those of you that are live. So thank you everyone for coming to our Monday night webinar. This is Holly Pike from ArtisticThreadWorks.com and YouCanDigitize.com with Generations. Thanks for joining us. I hope it was helpful. We learned a lot and did a lot in this, in this hour. Please join us on YouCanDigitize.com and watch the webinars. Use the artwork practice. Let's get in your software and, and start having some fun with it. Have a great evening, everyone. Hi, I'm Larry. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was recorded during a live webinar that Holly taught some of her students for digitizing. At this point, she's finished the lesson that she had planned to teach, and for the next 20 or 30 minutes, probably, she'll go on and answer random questions from her students during the live webinar. I'm going to cut those off, and I'm going to take those and turn them into little video shorts to put here on our YouTube channel later. But for now, you've got this lesson, and if you enjoyed it, learned something, please give it a thumbs up. That helps our rankings with YouTube. Um, also, if you'd like a copy of the software that Holly's using so that you can digitize along with her, we can get you a 30-day trial that's fully functional if you just go to www.trygenerations.com. www.trygenerations.com. And we'll give you all the details there. Thanks for watching.